Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dan Calloway here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, uh, otherwise known as Data Pioneer on YouTube. Uh, and today I want to do part two of the DocuWiki um, video that I did a couple of days ago. In that video, in part one, I showed you how I installed DocuWiki um, using Fortainer and Open Media Vault, using a Docker container image, and uh, deploying the stack to a container a Docker container on Docker Hub. Uh, it is installed locally on my system running on a Raspberry Pi Model 4 with 4 gigs of RAM and um, today in part 2 what I'd like to do is dive into Docker Wiki and show you a little bit about how it works, uh, how you can set it up and how you can uh, get it to do what you want it to do to document your workflow. And so let's get into that right after this. Okay, Data Pioneer, I'm, I'm back and um, went ahead and made a clean uh, DocuWiki um, container. Uh, so I'm not using the one that I have for my own personal workflow. I've got one here I'm going to use to uh, show you how to go about uh, doing certain things with DocuWiki. First thing I want to show you here is uh, I've got this container now at the IP address of 192.168. Dot one dot one twenty five and I'm using port eighty eighty seven because my regular workflow docker wiki uses port eighty eighty six uh, and I'm using port eighty eighty eight for something else uh, and so I'm going to use eighty eighty seven here and so when I touch it this is what I put in the browser any web browser on my LAN I can access my um, docker wiki at that IP address and port number and that was created in portainer and I showed you that in part one uh, of this part two, uh, uh, two part rather series. This is part two of that series and in this part two series I'm going to show you um, how to utilize Docker Wiki. So let's get into it. First thing is if you go up to the sitemap you've got your recent changes and you've got your media manager. We'll look at both of those in this particular video. Uh, you've also got something called sitemap and if you click on that it shows you uh, basically a stratification of your Docker Wiki. Now, you may or may not be familiar with the term sitemap in web design, but in web design, you know, a website is various pages uh, and sections of the site itself. It's not a single page. And so the sitemap is a quick way of showing you the outline, if you will, of your website. Well, uh, Consequently, the Dugger Wiki is is a website, okay, and and so it's one that you can create and modify on the fly, and um, or anyone else who you allow to access it, and so a sitemap does the same thing. Basically, it shows a stratification. So if I click here, it says this is the wiki. If I click to the left of that at this diamond and left click it, or click the wiki itself, it shows the um, stratification here. So here's the Docker Wiki itself, here's the syntax, and here's the welcome. So if I click on welcome, uh, it gives you, and if you, when you install Docker Wiki, by the, you'll get all of this, all right? So you get the welcome to your new Docker Wiki, you get create your pages, it'll tell you how to create the pages, uh, how to customize your Wiki here in this section, and how to join the community. Now I am a part of the community as well. I also belong to the forum, uh, have an account up on the forum so if I have issues I can easily go up there and ask questions and so I highly recommend you join the community as well. Over here on the right since we have more than one heading here we have three headings and a title uh, it creates automatically a table of contents for you and so we've got the welcome to your new Docker wiki you've got create your first page customize your wiki and join the community All right, so if I click on that it automatically pulls that up so that you have it. Now this is one page, so the table of contents really isn't necessary for a one-page uh, document here, but that's uh, just to show you that it, you know, what, what it's for. If I go back to sitemap and click the link, uh, I can go back out now to syntax. All right, so if I click on syntax, it will take you to this syntax page. And here with the syntax page, it tells you uh, what all the formatting syntax is of Docker Wiki. And you can read about this. 
Uh, it gets into the basic text formatting. There's a lot to DockerWiki. This is only the basics here, and I'm not going to get deep into DockerWiki myself. I'm just going to show you the basics. And so here, um, DockerWiki says supports bold, and you get utilize bold by using two asterisks on either side of the word or words that you want to boldface in your document. Italics is done by putting two forward slanting lines on either side of the word or words that you want to uh, uh, make italicized. So here up, up above, you can see uh, this is the actual text that's Im embedded in the DocuWiki document on the website. And this, this is what gets rendered here. So it says DocuWiki supports bold. So that's the bold here. Italic, which is the italic here. Underlined is two underscores on either side of the word. So here's creates an underline. And then monospace is two uh, single quotations on either side of monospace text. So then of course you can combine those. All right, so let's let's go back out to the Docker Wiki here and uh, click on Docker Wiki. Docker Wiki is um, the actual information about it, what it is, what it's about, how to go ahead and download it. And we did that in part one. I showed you that on DockerWiki.org. And then down below that, there's a, a read more. Uh, gives you a lot of information about DockerWiki, you know, feature list, uh, happy users, who wrote about it, uh, what bloggers think, uh, compare it with others. Let's see if you go to the what bloggers think here. Uh, there's a blog role. There's an actual uh, sidebar on the side here. And then there's still a table of contents as well uh, on the right-hand side. Okay, I'm going to go back and uh, come in down. So it's installing DockerWiki gives you some information on that. Using Docker Wiki gives you information on that. Customizing Docker Wiki and then the Docker Wiki feedback and community. Um, so you can take a look at that for yourself. Here's some a copyright uh, notification and that kind of things. Obviously this is copyrighted. Uh, but it is open source and so you can uh, create this. You can utilize it and any changes you make to it to the actual program on the programmatic side of course, you have to share that, and that's per uh, the license that are down here, okay? Which is the uh, CC attribution, uh, non-commercial share alike for .o international license. You might want to check that out. Okay, one of the things I forgot to mention earlier when uh, I got into this page is that there is a Docker Wiki manual. Uh, so if you click this link here, it takes you out to the manual itself. Now. The links that are in the DocuWiki that I created take you out to the website. They don't uh, necessarily keep you within the DocuWiki that you've created. So you have to be careful about that. You can't update this unless you have a reason to do it uh, and they allow it. So this is the manual. This is everything you ever wanted to know about DocuWiki but were afraid to ask, to be honest. Uh, so if you have any questions whatsoever, if you can't find the answer, within this manual, uh, your forums are going to be able to help you with it. And so uh, that's one of the reasons we're not going to go really deep into it here. Uh, this is a learning curve, obviously, with, with Docker Wiki. Like I say, I use this, um, you know, as my workflow, my daily workflow, and uh, I really like it because it allows me to, to do, uh, keep track of a lot of documentation that I do. Um, courses that I'm taking online and that kind of thing. So you'll enjoy it, I know. Uh, but don't feel like uh, you're going to be able to uh, use this right out of the box uh, because uh, no one can. You're going to have to learn it, and this is the way you do it. So you can learn it here. There, there are lots of tutorials, too, by the way, on Docker Wiki that can help you with that. I'll put links to a lot of this stuff down below the video um, after I've created it. And so let's go back. And so now we're back on the... Uh, or actually, we're not on the Docker. There we are. Now we're back on the Docker Wiki that I actually created here for this purpose. So let's get back into the syntax here. So if I click on the syntax link, that takes me back here to what we were looking at earlier. And uh, we covered this section. So let's go on down a little bit further. It says you can also subscript and superscript too. And so um, to do that, you just put the sub tag here in front of what you want to subscript and then close that tag is like HTML and then um, super is the SUP and um, tag and the 
close soup tag for the superscript uh, as well. And so when you do that in the in the editor, uh, it renders it like this. Okay. And you can mark something as deleted as well. So if you have something you want to mark as deleted, this sentence says you can mark something as deleted as well. And so you put a del tag in front of deleted and they de close the del tag afterwards. And that puts a line through the word deleted. It's very, very nice to do. Another thing about Docker Wiki is if you want to create a paragraph, all you have to do is, and I'll show you this when we get into the editor, all you have to do is just, uh, unlike HTML, you just hit the enter key and go down to the next line or two lines down and that creates a new paragraph. So any spaces that you have, you have to create a space. So you have to hit the space bar first, then go down one or more lines. That creates a new paragraph. But if you want to do a paragraph, a new line rather, within a paragraph, but you don't want to create a new paragraph, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to use two forward slanting lines and a space. All right, and so if you'll notice down here, this mimics what's in the editor. It says this is some text with some uh, line break. And it's got two slashes, two backslashes. Note that the two backslashes are only recognized at the end of the line. And so notice here that you have the double sl uh, slanting left lines here after line break. So that creates a new line here, but it doesn't create a new paragraph. It only creates a new line. And so you come down to the next line, which is note that the two backslashes are only recognized at the end of the line. All right. So you get two left uh, slanting lines here. And so that creates a new line or followed by two forward slanting lines. OK, this happens without it. And so what happens is if you have no space after the two left slanting lines, then it does not create a new line it actually captures the two left slanting lines in the text itself. Something you probably don't want to do necessarily. All right, so remember two, four, two left slanting lines or backward slanting lines uh, and a space will create a new line. Okay, now uh, Docker Wiki also supports links and so you can do either external or internal links, uh, whichever you want to do or both. Uh, one of the things that you need to know is that the external links are automatically recognized by uh, Docker Wiki. So if you just type in the text editor uh, www.http www.google.com or just www.google.com, then you're going to get this kind of rendering, which if you right click and I'll take you out there in a separate tab, it does render to google.com. Okay. Um, and the same with this link as well. So it's automatically recognized. But if you want some text instead, but yet take you to google.com, so that in other words, you have a hyperlink that's recognized by text. So this the text is this link points to Google. Then you're going to have to do it like this. So you're going to have to have double bracket encapsulation uh, and put the URL in front of the pipe symbol. And then you can put a space in front of this if you want and a space after, or you don't have to. Um, you can just simply push them together. And so you put the URL in front, then the pipe symbol, and then you put this link points to Google, which is the, the text that you want to represent as the hyperlink. And if as long as it's double encapsulated in brackets, you're fine. And then so if I right click on that and select it, it takes us to google.com just like, like you normally see in, on websites, okay? Okay, and so email is the same way. So um, in Docker Wiki, uh, you render that using the less than and greater than sign on either side of the email address. And so in this example, we've got Andy at splitbrain.org. It gets rendered like this so that when you click on it, it just opens up your email client and puts uh, Andy at splitbrain.org in the two block. All right, so that's how you do it in Docker Wiki. Now, if we come on down, um, You've got internal linking and external linking. So the internal linking here is explained here. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, inner wiki, I'm not going to go into that either. But I am going to look at image links. And so here with an image link, you can embed images into your documents uh, in Docker Wiki. And the way to do that is double bracketed uh, again, uh, encapsulation with the URL to the actual source of the file. Uh, image file that you're rendering. So in this case, php.net, and then uh, the pipe symbol, and then you've got double 
braces, and then you've got the name of the file, all right, and um, here, docker-wiki, dash 128.ping, and then in front of that, in with a colon, separated by a colon, is the actual namespace. And so this is the namespace of wiki, colon, and then the file name, all right. And if you wanted to render that in a different size, then you could follow that with another pipe symbol within this double brace encapsulation, and then follow that by the uh, actual resolution, like 200 by 400. And so you'd have 200 comma 400 there, and it would render it as a 200 by 400 image, uh, pixel image. All right, so that's uh, image links. You've got footnotes, you've got media files, et cetera, et cetera. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about this part of it. Okay, so the easiest way to create a start page uh, or your very first page on your Docker Wiki is to go to the welcome page in the uh, page that you can go to from the uh, Docker Wiki that you create. And right underneath where it says create your first pages, you'll see that your wiki needs to have a start page as long as it doesn't exist. And this link will be red. So notice it's red. And if I click on it, it says start and says this topic does not yet exist. And uh, you follow the link to a page or a topic that doesn't exist yet. If permissions allow, you may create it by clicking on the create this page. And so what that's referring to here is this link right here. So if you click on that, highlight it, click create this page, it opens up uh, this editor and you'll notice that in this tab it says start. It's kind of grayed out. You can see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the first heading on this page and I'm going to make this the main heading. Now you, you do have this bar across here which is your actual uh, menu for things that you can do like bold, italics, underline, uh, line through or delete, you know, the things we talked about earlier. You can do it through this menu, so you don't have to remember, you know, that for bold, that you use uh, dot dot bold, okay, asterisk, asterisk, all right, so you don't have to do that. All you have to do is just type the word bold and then just highlight the word and then just select bold, okay. I'm not going to do that right now because I want to do a heading first. So the headings, um, there is syntax for that as well. So what you can do is you can either select the headline and come over here and select H1 for level 1, which is the largest. Level 2 is the next largest. Level 3 is the next. It's five levels, all right? You can do it that way. Or if you can remember the syntax, you can come down here and the very H1 heading tag is equal sign five times. So five equals a space. This is my heading one. All right, and then space, and one, two, three, four, five equal marks there as well. All right, and so come on down. If you want to do a subheading, you can do four equal signs, a space. This is my uh, second heading. in the space and then four all right and so if we go ahead and click save or if actually before I do that if you want to look at what you've done to see if it's going to render properly before you create the page you can click this preview link and down below is going to show you what's going to sh come out of uh, the rendering side uh, on the page itself and so this looks okay for me all right so I'm going to go ahead and click save and what that's going to do is that's going to create that very first page called start all right and uh, you, can, you can name it something else if you want to, uh, but here in this case it's called Start. That's your start page. All right, so if I want to edit that, I can come over here to edit this page, and it brings this up again. I'm going to go ahead and click to the right of the first heading. I'm going to hit the, the uh, Enter key twice and open this up, and I'm just going to type in a, a sentence. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. All right. And so I'm going to, I want to bold the word time. So I'm going to highlight time. Just click bold. So that injects the two asterisks on either side. Uh, for all good men, I'm just going to say all. I'm going to italicize that. All right. Which is the two forward slanting lines on either side of the word. 
and then I'm going to uh, underscore or underline good and so I'm going to highlight good and underline it so you've got your two uh, underscore lines on each side of good all right and then to come I want to delete that out and so I'm just going to do that here and that's going to put Dell on either side of it and uh, let's take a look and see what that looks like so I'm going to click save and so it says now is the time time is in bold for all all is italicized good is underlined okay to come and to come is deleted all right and so it rendered the way we wanted it to yeah properly all right now I want to create another page from within here all right so what I want to do is I want to come back over to edit this page and I want to come down and uh, I don't want to create a new paragraph but I want to put another line below this one here where it says now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country so what I can do is, is put in two backward slanting lines and then hit the space bar to put a space there and then hit down one line below and I want to put in um, uh, a new page and so I'm going to do double bracket I'm going to call the page uh, my underscore second underscore page all right and then close the double bracket and so let's take a look at that in the preview and see what that looks like all right so here it says my second page notice it's red and that is your second page all right and it's going to be red until you put content in it and then when you put content in it it's going to render green so let's go ahead and I'm going to click that link and so here's my second page it's called my second page all right and so I'm going to edit that page and I'm going to create uh, a new page here all right so I'm going to call um, well let me actually create a uh, main heading I want to click one that's my main heading so the level one heading I'm going to call it second page all right and come out here and double space and then I'm going to come down and say I want to create a new subsection below this all right and then I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to click that and say h3 tag all right so we have an h3 tag now if I click save what that's going to do is that's going to create a page 3 it's going to have a heading it's going to have a subheading and it's also going to have a subheading below that now this is of course is you know it's just it's just for demonstration purposes um, you wouldn't do this of course but I wanted to do it to demonstrate this and so here uh, if you have more than two sections uh, with you have a heading a subheading and then a sub subheading what's going to happen is or if you have three primary headings all right or a combination of any of these then what happens is docker wiki automatically creates uh, a table of contents for you which is really nice so you've got this is my page three which is pointing to this heading uh, I want to create a new section which is pointing to this subsection or subheading or h2 tag okay and then I want to create a new subhead section below this points to this one here that we created which is an h3 section in uh, docker wiki and so you know if you want to click that it takes you to each one of those now if this was a long page it would actually drop you down to that particular page but it creates a table of contents for you automatically which I think is a great thing okay so to get back to uh, any other page that you've already created you can either come up here to the breadcrumbs and you can click on like start my second page or third page or start page uh, and get back to it or you can go to the sitemap and click that and uh, it will render that in the sitemap as well that you now have a second page the, the original page called start and then your third page that you've created in your docker wiki now notice all these are green and that means that there's content in each of these all right so you've got content in the original my second and third page so let's go back to the original page and here it is and uh, if I want to edit that I can come down let's say I want to edit here I can come down and click edit that's going to open up the editor what I want to do is I want to put uh, an image in here all right uh, so this is a page of my uh, featured 
products. All right. And so I'm going to drop down and uh, after the colon. And to it, so to enter some image here, I'm going to go over and I'm going to select Add Images. I'm just going to use the menu. All right. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to open up this picture, this uh, window here. All right. And then I'm going to select Files. It's going to go out to the web, uh, to my local computer. I'm going to go to Pictures, and I'm going to go down to uh, Feature Products. Click OK or Open. It's going to load that name in there, and then I'm going to say Upload. All right, so it loaded that particular image in the Media Manager. All right, and so here I'm going to say Done. And so now there's the image. All right. And so if I close this dialog now, if I want to actually put that particular image in, uh, let's do the preview first. Okay, there's nothing there. All right. So let's go back here. And so if I come down again, and uh, let me go ahead and cancel that. All right. So we get back to the editor. If we go back down to the editor, oh, I went to the wrong one. Let's go to the third editor. And uh, so I canceled the whole thing. So let me just do uh, this is a page of my featured products. All right, come down. I want to put an image in here. And so I'm going to select that. I'm going to select that image. And then when I select the image, uh, I don't have to do it this way. I could have put the image in, in the media manager first and then just immediately selected it. I didn't have to delete it the way I did, but uh, this is the way I've done it. So I select the image. It's going to pop up this link settings. The link target it can either be linked to detail page or linked to the original, uh, no link at all, or a link out to some other link. So I'm going to do link target. I'm going to do a left alignment. You can do left, or you can do uh, here, left, or link to a line, no alignment, uh, link to the middle or link to the right. So I'm going to link left. The image size can either be small, medium, large, or original. All right, so I'm going to do small and then insert. All right, and so what happens is on the edit page, you can see that it actually injects the actual code or syntax that Docker Wiki uses. And here it's a double brace encapsulation quote or a colon rather in front of feature products underscore large dot ping which is the name of the file itself featured dash products underscore large dot ping then it's followed by a question mark and then 200 so this is a 200 by 200 resolution image space after that means that the 200 applies to both width and length or width and height okay if you didn't have a space there, then it would just be for the 200 uh, for width. And then you follow that with a pipe symbol, all right, which is the uh, just above the enter key on the keyboard, which is the, uh, the uh, shift key on that. So shift, and then it gives you a pipe symbol above the enter key. All right, so if we look at the preview, click on that. So that's how it's rendered when we save it, all right. So if I click save, that's what the page looks like. And so here, if I want to put something after that, I can click Edit. I can come here and I can put uh, two more spaces. Now let's say if I want my featured products to be uh, Product 1, and then I want uh, a new line. So I did double backslash and enter space, white space, and then Product 2. Double backslash, space, Enter, product three, double backslash, space, and enter. And so when I hit save, I'm going to get product one, product two, and product three off to the right-hand side. But why am I going to get it off to the, to the right instead of below? And that's because I left aligned the image itself. All right, so if I had had no alignment, that means that product one, product two, and product three would have dropped down below here. So that's the way you wrap uh, text around the image on your Docker Wiki page. Okay, so one of the last things I want to show you here is how to create a sidebar for your Docker Wiki if you want to do that. 
And the way to do that is to go back to your welcome page. So let me click on the welcome link. And then down here on the third line below, create your first pages, you're going to see a sidebar page uh, link. So go ahead and click that. And that opens this up here. All right. So if I do a create this page, all right, and I'm going to say uh, sidebar item one. Okay, and backsliding line twice, base, enter, sidebar, item two, double backspace, space, white, uh, white space, and enter, sidebar, item three, double backspace, white space, enter, and then hit uh, preview. You can see that we have those underneath each other. All right, I'm going to hit save. So what happens is, is instead of the sidebar, this is the page, but instead of it being um, in the page itself as a new page, it's going to be on the sidebar here. All right, so you can make those links out to other pages, probably external links out to the web, and that kind of thing. So now if I, if I go to any other page, so let's say my second page, here's my second page on the Docker Wiki, but I still have my sidebar here on the left-hand side. And so um, it's a great way of uh, creating a sidebar so that you don't have it incorporated in your table of contents or that you don't have to link out to a lot of things within your pages itself. If I click on sidebar, uh, it's going to take me back into the editing mode where I can go back in and edit the actual uh, items themselves. And let's say if I wanted to make this uh, hyperlink, all right, and I wanted to hyperlink that out to... Uh, let's say I wanted to do it internally. I could select one of my internal pages. But if I wanted to do it externally, like say to my website, I could do HTTPS colon backslash or forward slash forward slash data pioneer dash network dot org. All right. And then hit enter. All right. And so here you're going to get rendered the way it would look if it were an actual external link, which is double bracketed encapsulation. The URL precedes the uh, uh, pipe symbol and then sidebar item one is the text that you're going to render uh, forward backslash backslash. All right. And so now if I go and click save here. All right. So you're going to have uh, actually that didn't render properly. So let me go back out edit this page. So what I need to do now is I need to uh, actually remove since I did it this way as a hyperlink, I can remove these two and then make that uh, backslash, backslash, and a space there, all right, and drop down. And so when I do save now, it should render properly, and it does. And so sidebar item one is now a hyperlink. And if I click that hyperlink or right click and new, new tab, it's going to take me actually out to my website, all right, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so this is. Uh, Pretty much a you know an easy quick run through of some of the things you can do in Docker Wiki. This is by in no means uh, covering all the bases here, but you need to get into uh, the syntax page. It's where you need to start first. Take a look at that. Uh, get up on the uh, um, the manual itself and follow the manual. Uh, get into the forums page and uh, look and see what questions have been asked and what the answers are and that kind of thing. And that should help you. Uh, here's the media manager. I wanted to show you that before we leave. So this is the uh, link I put up there. Uh, and then here's a dockerwiki.svg itself. Um, link that we have. Root here is the... I put that particular image in the root of the wiki instead of on the wiki itself. You don't have to do it that way. I chose to do it that way. And then, uh, oh, one thing I wanted to show you before we leave. Um, I do want to show you that I was on the third page, I believe, or it's on the start page, and I made some changes here. And if I want to look at recent changes that have been made, I can come up and uh, I can do the recent changes, and that's for the whole site. Or I can come down and I can look at old revisions. Okay, old revisions shows me, shows me things that have been done that have been revised recently. Here's the current revision. All right. Here's the timestamp on that revision, and here's the date in month, day, month, year. So let me go ahead and click that. And then 
here's the start page that was uh, one minute before that. And so if I click that box as well, and then come down to this button that says Show Differences, I can click that. And what that does is that shows you the last thing I did to that page, all right, which is to inject this product one, two, and three into it. Uh, and so this is a neat way of looking at your changes uh, so you can keep track of that. And you can actually go back to that uh, previous, uh, re you can revert back to a previous uh, link itself if you want to. Um, so you can link to the comparison view, uh, you can do a side-by-side -side, or you can do um, inline as well, okay? And so let's go back out to uh, the start page. Let's go back to the start page, close that, all right? And, uh, and so here are recent revisions or recent changes, all right? And so here's, is, this is my second heading. This is the sidebar change that we made, that kind of thing. And so you can revert back to those by just selecting those and highlighting them, and that'll take you back to the uh, most recent change that you made um, on your wiki. Okay, so this has been a quick look at Docker Wiki um, Part 2, which was uh, how to get into Docker Wiki and how to create pages, how to uh, edit those pages, how to inject images into it, uh, how to use the syntax within Docker Wiki to uh, spruce up the page and and we just touched the surface here guys so you'll need to get in and you'll need to take a look about uh, how to do this yourself and um, I think you'll enjoy it so if this if this was helpful go ahead and click a, the link down below the video with a thumbs up uh, to give me a thumbs up for the page that will help to improve my site and my channel and uh, if you haven't subscribed to me yet go ahead and subscribe and then when you do click that bell off to the right hand side and then uh, select all so that you get uh, every time I update a video you get alerted to it. So this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Hope you have a great day. Take care. Goodbye.